So we have a few. I mean, we we can bring out our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start. I'm going to pass this around because this, I think, is one of the kind of epitomizes a lot of this conversation. And this is an ivory carving that's at the Wadsworth Athenaeum. And I think it's really one of the probably the top masterpieces at the Athenaeum. And it's the uh, Adam, carving of Adam and Eve by the workshop or circle of Master of St. Sebastian's Martyrdom, uh, South Germany and Austria, 1630 to 1650. And it's about a foot tall, and you can even see part of the curve of that elephant tusk that it was carved from. Uh, it is it's a masterpiece of uh, Renaissance carving, and it's like a Renaissance painting come to life. Uh, and for the 1630s, this was exotic material, beautiful grain, beautiful material to carve in the hand of this master craftsman's carved this. Uh, to put burdens underneath this, an object like this, um, and to put this at risk is, is crazy. I mean, enough of that. But well, um, you know, when you get to the Athenaeum, take a look at this sometimes because it's a really a great object. And then the other thing that's similar that we have. This is a, a, a fabulous, and I want you to come up and look at it, touch it. Just, it's a, probably a tobacco box or just a little cash box perhaps. And it's ivory and it's sort of veneered on horn. And it's probably uh, late 17th century. And um, you could, if you come up and see the faces, it's Adam and Eve. And the faces are classic that we see of the mid 18th and early uh, late 17th century. And, um, and then on the back side, it's a little erotic, a little funny, because if you remember from the Bible, Eve was lost from the uh, Garden of Eden. Well, you're going to see here in a very funny position how she was tossed from the garden. It's very, so look at the back side of it, it's very funny. And uh, so I, we have not gotten a permit for this one. I refuse to because we don't need to have this appraised. It's, it's an outrage. It's, it's so incredible. And, um, but Come up and look at it. We'll leave but it. if we were to sell that, we would. Yes, we would. <laughs> and, so, and actually, put that on the table here. Aren't you? So I'm getting to something a little bit quickly because this is often brought up, and I'm talking to two really great examples. Uh, as I kind of mentioned in passing, part of the, the urge an urgency to get a ban on all ivory with no exceptions for antiques is the inability to tell modern from antique ivory. And I think these are really two great examples that you could probably even see from where you're sitting. Uh, and this piece of ivory uh, has a little tag on the bottom. It says bought circa 1960, $675 for the pair. And there's two figures, there's the emperor and the emperor's wife. Um, so this is, by the label, 1960, I have no real reason to doubt it. And with modern art, you can see it is solid, it's white, uh, and if you look underneath, there's really no wear marks or shrinkage marks to speak of. Uh, but when you compare it to this box, the patina, the texture, uh, you look, carry a magnifying glass, I, antique ivory becomes practically translucent, at least to a depth that you can see the light really going into the ivory and coming out of the ivory. Uh, it just has a whole different look to it. Um, so the idea that this 1960s piece and this you know, 1660s piece, uh, you can't distinguish from them. Uh, this, this is a great example. I did this uh, routine in front of the uh, the state legislature and took out my magnifying glass and said, this is what we do every day. We look at things and we judge the authenticity of them by, by these characteristics. Um, so th these, uh, and maybe rightfully so, these, these figures, 1960, are, are interesting. Um, you get into another figure, and this is, a, a, from a, this is not part of the pair, 
Uh, this one starts to show some wear and some age and some shrinkage. Uh, but there's no marks or anything on the bottom, no inscription. Um, so this figure will kind of be in limbo as the federal law states now until it's over 100 years old. So I don't know, say it was made a little before 1960, 1940, 1920. Well, we're close. We're 2020 is next year, so it might be 100 years old soon. Um, but until then, it kind of puts it at risk because it has no value. Um, but I, I think it's an interesting comparison of kind of the stages of ivory uh, for objects that are comprised mostly of ivory. Uh, the other elements that we look at are pieces that are components of a larger object. So this box, which I think is really fabulous, uh, is a ladies' sewing box or jewelry box, valuable box, and um, it's federal period probably. And it says there are two labels. One of them says Marie Gansafort Melville from her father, should be father-in-law, the father, Thomas Melville, October. 1814, and then it says Marie Gans Melville, June 10th, 1824, when she died. That was Herman Melville's mother's jewelry box. So just think, Herman Melville had his greasy little hands <laughs> pulling out his mother's jewelry and uh, has little, that's a totally original, with the original ivory knobs. And so the question is, can we sell it? Well, uh, yes, we can because we have a permit. We had it appraised. And um, so, yes, we can sell this because it's been blessed. <laughs> but, but, and, I, and I think, too, the, uh, the interesting thing in this box made in Boston, and actually, uh, Maria Kinsport's father uh, and father in law were both. Uh, significant Revolutionary War uh, patriots and heroes, um, and uh, one in New York State, and uh, Herman Melville's uh, ancestor was uh, involved in the Boston Tea Party. Uh, but it goes to show that kind of worldliness of these great lion head brasses imported from England, the bird's eye maple uh, from America, the ivory, and then the red kind of Moroccan leather that's on, on the top of the lids. Uh, with the satin wood at bordering around it. I mean, it shows why they would select a material like ivory, because it's exotic and interesting and visual, and the way those little knobs really stand out and make a, a statement. So, yes? To assure it's not available. It's, not <laughs> it's definitely not available. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you come on and you look at the, the uh, box over there, with the whale on it, you'll see how uh, granular the whale is compared to the ivory, which is really clean and white and really fine. Yeah. So, any other questions? Well, thank you for sitting through all this legal <laughs> jargon, but. Uh, <laughs>